preparation of alcohols. If we take a primary alkyl halide and we react it with sodium hydroxide in DMSO, which is a polar acrotic solvent, we get SN2 substitution and we end up with the primary alcohol. So that's a way to prepare alcohols via substitution. What about a secondary alkyl halide with sodium hydroxide and dimethyl sulfoxide? Well, we will get some SN2 happening. But remember, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. And the major product of reacting a strong base with um, a secondary substrate is the E2 product. So in this case, the alkene would be our major product over the alcohol and elimination would rule over substitution. We'd still get some alcohol via substitution. It would just be a minor product. But if we get the E2 product, we can make an alcohol via an addition reaction, hydration. If we have a tertiary alkyl halide, well, it can't go SN2. because the substrate is too sterically crowded. But if we use a weak nucleophile like water at a low temperature to favor substitution, we can get some SN1 product, which would be a tertiary alcohol. So addition to make an alcohol, we've got several different ways we can do it. If we react an alkene with uh, sulfuric acid and water, dilute sulfuric acid and water, that's acid catalyzed hydro. And the regiochemistry of the product is Markovnikov. If we did acid catalyzed hydration of this alkene, we get a rearrangement product. So here it would be much better to do oxymercuration, demercuration. In the first step, we'd use mercuric acetate and water. And in the second step, we'd use sodium borohydride. And again, we'd get the Markovnikov alcohol. What process would we use to get the anti-Markovnikov alcohol? we'd use hydroboration oxidation. The hydroboration step is accomplished with borane and tetrahydrofurane, and the oxidation step is accomplished with a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. So these are three ways to make an alcohol via addition. We can also make diols via addition. If we have cyclohexene and we treat it with a particular reagent, we get the syn diol. What reagent was that? Well, the greenest way to go is probably potassium permanganate in cold or osmium tetroxide in a catalytic amount with NMO. Right, so catalytic OSO4 with NMO. That's syn dihydroxylation. You get the syn Also, to get the antidiol, we could use a peroxy acid followed by acetic, acidic conditions. The peroxy acid makes an epoxide, and then the ring is opened under acidic conditions. We could also make the epoxide by going through the halohydrin. To make the halohydrin, you would treat the alkene with bromine or iodine or chlorine in water. So then you'd have anti-addition of a hydroxyl group on one carbon and the vicinal carbon would have the halogen. Then you treat that halohydrin with excess sodium hydroxide. The first equivalent of sodium hydroxide would deprotonate the hydroxyl group and then it would do intramolecular SN2 on the alpha carbon of the halogen which would create the um, epoxide. Then the second equivalent of hydroxide would do a ring opening reaction on the epoxide. Either way, you get the anti-diol. So we can make the syndiol, 
using osmium tetroxide or potassium permanganate. We make the anti-diol by going through the epoxide, either peroxy acid followed by acid or make the halohydrin and then use excess hydroxide.